We are very delighted to have Dr. Parkala Prabhakar, a renowned commentator, author, and also an activist. And uh, Idam is extremely delighted to welcome you, sir, for this conversation Thank in you. our studio. So, we will just start with your very famous book, The Crook Timber of New India. So, in that book, you have uh, really uh, brought to focus some very important issues that is connected with the past 10 years of India's political uh, journey. And uh, one of the fundamental or, I mean, basic theme of the new government headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2014 was that a new India in terms of development, in terms of inclusiveness, without what do you call a majoritarian, authoritarianism or whatever it is called. And that is the issue which you have flagged in your book. And looking back, what do you feel now, sir? You see, uh, when the BJP, under the leadership of uh, the present Prime Minister, had started its campaign for the 2014 election, the promises, the kind of positions that it has taken, the promises uh, that it, they, they've made, are very attractive. For instance, the then campaign focused on ending corruption, yes, ending policy paralysis, bringing the black money back to the country from abroad, and creating two crore jobs per annum. Yeah, every year two crore. Every year, and uh, promising a a very Genuine federalism, giving rights to states, that was the kind of uh, promise. And there was absolutely no hint of a majoritarian or Hindutva or Hindu Vadi kind of a um, element in the manifesto yeah. or in the campaign pitch. On the contrary, the then Prime Minister and candidate went ahead and said, the fight today is not between Hindus and Muslims, but together Hindus and Muslims should fight poverty and unemployment. Yes. Therefore, the fight is India today is between Hindus and Muslims on the one side and unemployment and poverty on the other side. So that was the kind of narrative that they were pushing, corruption-free government, no policy paralysis, no black money, bringing black money from abroad and giving 15 lakh rupees to all the honest taxpayers and fight against corruption, fight against poverty, fight against unemployment. That was the pitch. And in initial stages, the Prime Minister went on saying that he was a Pradhan Sevak, not a Pradhan yeah. Mantri. Yeah. And he went on saying that it was Team India, it was not just him. Team India at that time consisted of, in his own words, Prime Minister and all the Chief Ministers. Together, they would take the country forward. Today, there is no talk about Pradhan creating, Sevak. creating jobs, no talk about Pradhan Sevak, no talk about Team India. No talk about employment, no talk about ending of uh, corruption, no talk of uh, bringing back the black money, no talk about putting 15 lakh rupees in every honest taxpayer's person. On. on the other hand, his own home minister at one time, one time said that it was all a jumla, it was all an election. You know, kind propaganda, of propaganda, basically. publicity. Just to, you know, uh, to, deceive, words, to, to deceive. He said it in so many words. Now, what is worrying is just to gain power, BJP, under the leadership of the present Prime Minister, had told a lot of lies, very interesting lies, very attractive lies. Lot of people fell for it. Yeah, that is what that is what the issue is. Because how see, could how could 
if so many of the people especially the educated urban, urban yeah. middle class or upper middle class in including the corporates they fell for it what is the reason? what is the, how do you read that situation you see because you see initially they did not talk about this hindutva and all that yeah so to me as i describe in the book all the progressive talk of ending unemployment corruption creating jobs and uh, bringing prices down you remember when uh, fuel prices were just about 60 rupees yeah and you know they 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 went to town saying that shadow prices are rising abnormally abnormally and they were also talking about the indian rupee going down against the dollar yes. that was time again rupee was something like so they were all making these noises yeah. just to get into it. that's why i say that they used all these things to launch their vehicle of hindutva okay and you know the, the actual payload is hindutva but all these small small things will fall off you know when the rocket lift goes up, up yeah. you know many things fall off but the actual payload stays so the actual payload for this government and for this regime is hindutva they used all the other things that i have mentioned so far as you know as as expendable small small things which are shed on its way up but their payload is hindutva that is what has come to now when people almost realize this they used uh, you know war with pakistan and bombing of the uh, uh, balakot balakot just before 2019 election and got through that today they are now situation is even more grim you know we are one of the highest unemployment youth unemployment especially yeah. in the world we have 24 percent youth unemployment and our small neighbor bangladesh their youth unemployment rate is only 12 percent yes and we have a very high unacceptable level of inflation price rise and in spite of whatever the government says the rural areas still are undergoing a lot of distress and we have not recovered from the blow that the economy has received from demonetization which is absolutely mindless kind of a yeah. thing only wudu economists go for such kind of a measure yeah even just before demonetization the economy was already slowing slowing down yeah so yeah. very very indicated and then you had uh, a, a big blow in demonetization and there was no signs of any recovery anywhere and then you had a pandemic. pandemic yeah and remember during the pandemic in one quarter we had minus 23 percent growth. growth that is the kind of you know shattering effect that one of course is pandemic the other uh, one is the demonetization and the kind of uh, you know absolutely thoughtless measures in the economy that this government has taken the reason i go back to show that the bjp has no coherent economic ideology they have no coherent economic thought that is the reason why the country is drifting day by day into you know absolute red in the economy now friends look at look at the kind of uh, debt you know for so many years till this government came up the national debt stood at 50 lakh crore now it stands at 150 lakh crore, which means in 10 years this government had increased india's public debt national debt by 100 lakh crores and they have raided the surpluses of the reserve bank of india so bank and recently the in fact even imf has flagged this issue of india's debt and but our government has came out with a statement saying that our uh, imf is uh, over reading or over uh, i mean sir i must point this out to you that whenever somebody says nice things they say they are fond of them yeah and when they really flag the issues that are faced by the country 
Then they say they are anti-India, they are trying to demean India, defame India and all that. For instance, the World Hunger Index has come out yeah. and put India at a very, very, very low uh, ranking. Yeah. And they say they are anti-India. There is somebody called Morning Consult. I don't yeah. know if I've come across. Yeah. They, every every month they put out something. You know, I've, I've gone to the metrology and it's there in the book. It's such a silly, faulty metrology. But because they project the Prime Minister as the top ranking compared to other leaders in other countries, countries. As, as a very popular person, yes. you know, they drum up. That. So, somebody who says nice things about you, they're reliable, they're good. Somebody like, you know, World Hunger Index, I am uh, the World Bank, or some rating agencies, when they say, when they flag certain issues, they're anti-India, they're defaming India. This is the kind of narrative that these people are pushing. Because they, you know, is on every parameter, employment, unemployment. They tried even to suppress the data. data In yeah. 2019, you know, they, of course, they, 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 they labor, report force got labor force participation data. Yes, and the unemployment. And that time, the, the report very clearly said, it is the National Statistical Organization. The report very clearly said that in 40 years, this is the highest unemployment that India has witnessed. witnessed. And then uh, they've, uh, you know, uh, junked the report and the report, anyway, it got leaked. And as recently as about a few months ago, you know, International Institute of Population Studies, yeah. uh, Professor James, yeah. you know, his data showed very much at variation, especially, you know, the yes, individual, uh, Swachh Bharat, Swachh Bharat, the individual uh, toilets, all the things. Uh, therefore, some, some charges were trumped up against him and he was sacked. Yeah. He was suspended. So, the, and, uh, sir, I must tell you, once upon a time, not very long ago, India's statistical architecture was highly respected. Across the world. Across the world. Something which I wanted to really ask you, because this, what this government did during the last 10 years is to bring down the credibility, to bring down the kind of respect which the yeah. India's, uh, I mean, unlike many other countries in the, yeah. I mean, post-47 uh, period, India's statistical thing was very highly regarded and highly you know, not only the other third world countries. Yeah. Compared with the, even the advanced the, countries. But even the United States and the United Kingdom and other uh, advanced countries also used to take our statistician on consultation yeah. and set up their statistical architecture or make modifications to their architecture. architecture. That was the kind of credibility Indian statisticians had, Indian statistical architecture had. But today it is completely, completely demolished. And unfortunately, some of these uh, prime ministers are doing this. I mean, they are renowned economists. They themselves are. I mean, uh, supporting this kind of measures, people that, like... That is surprising because, you see, that is where I say that, you know, see, if, if, if there is somebody who genuinely believes that this country should belong to only Hindus, there are people. Yeah. There have been people for a long time. Long time. They are yeah. not, not new. We, we can dispute that. We can say that is not the value. We can talk about it, we can have a conflict, we can have a conversation, we can have a debate, we can very vehemently disagree. But there are people, to me, they are very dangerous. You know, you know when, when there is, uh, for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, they sang the secular song. Yeah. Today, suddenly, they become very communal. Very communal. Yeah. And you know, what is, what is really... It's like a neo-convert. What is really disheartening to me is when such things happen, in, in, in many countries, the establishment, the media, the industry, the academia, the public intelligentsia, these people stood up. They have not caved in. But in India, you just see what happened in, on, uh, say, 22nd of January. The entire Indian elite, be they sports persons or media barons or media, you know, film actors, uh, film actors, industrialists. You know, all uh, big uh, uh, people in the society, people who have prestige, and, and many political leaders, they've all trooped in there, you know, just to be seen. 
this is very worrying because people are not willing to stand up and be counted in this hour when our republic is standing at a crossroads yeah this brings to me to some political this thing what do you read about this whole uh, event in 22nd how it is going to impact the elections what is your reading and what is your you see uh, the reason why they did that and gave it such a huge publicity yeah. to me actually that is the starting of the bjp's election campaign for 2020, 2020. nothing else okay yeah. that is one the second thing is that you know there is a economic crisis it already started biting yeah the people in terms of uh, you know poverty otherwise what was the reason you see when when the entire government has gone all out to defame the world hunger index report saying that india doesn't stay hungry you know, yeah. people are not hungry what is the reason for the government to quickly announce that the uh, 82 crore people will be given free ration for the next 5 years. years why why if people are not hungry if people are very well fed are you giving at a stretch in one announcement for 5 years okay if 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 there is a little doubt then what you do is you give it for a year and see what it is yeah. but they know mm. the situation is very bad and they are worried that it might bite them therefore they diverted their attention to this ram bhajan okay that is the only thing see the point is this the point is you know when important economic issues like unemployment price rise and other issues like you know federal structure the states are unhappy because you know because the states financial powers are you know very imperceptibly stolen yes. by the central government slowly and slowly the states are not able to do anything the dues are not paid and the transfers have, are becoming smaller and smaller and those states which they favor the central government and the ruling dispensation favors they get more money more, yeah. and those states which they don't favor they don't see much of a political uh, return they they are being made to suffer that is what they are now calling the double engine growth exactly <laughs> now you elect us here and there yeah and then you get you get it as if the the dues belonging to the state is a kind of a larger save from the central government exactly because you see now that uh, that uh, video of the former ceo of uh, niti ayog has is is thick then yeah. and it also shows that indian media is is not bold enough to publish that so it had to be published abroad abroad yeah and where the former ceo who played a very important role both in the prime minister's office as well as uh, you know the ministry of finance the ministry of finance he said that the prime minister wanted to pressure the 14th finance commission to reduce the devolution to the states from 42% to, to 32%, 32% nearly 10% cut yes. huge and and, and uh, you know we must all appreciate the chairman of that finance commission dr y v reddy well, yes. spine and he stood up he said nothing to it and i am sure in, in today's circumstances any other person would have caved in caved in yeah and despite all these things especially the federal issue and the rights of the states the opposition parties are unable to make a kind of a very combined or effective counter to this thing even bringing it as a kind of a major political discussion point what is the reason for it sir most of the political parties actually because of their indifference to the core values of our republic over the several decades that is the reason why we landed here tell me isn't it a fact that almost all political parties with a very few uh, you know uh, honorable exceptions everybody did business with this yeah with this force yeah either directly or, or indirectly directly, yeah. either by participating in the government or just from outside support, support. everybody lent legitimacy to this yeah that is the reason why 
we are in this state number 1 number 2 very quietly and very diligently a section of the political establishment and those people who do not participate in politics the so called cultural organizations they have created a narrative in this country whereby today every political party wants to prove their hindu credentials yeah they yeah. you know a few years ago even bjp used to say that they were secular yes so secularism was the main key point of discourse of indian politics they used to say we are also secular but not like them yeah we are genuinely secular we are the others are the pseudo secular yeah yeah but today every political party is saying that we are also into but not like them no no from we are also secular but not like them to we are also hindu but not like them like you, you can see the see the you know a complete change in the indian political discourse this has happened because most of the political parties have become brain dead they somehow became very complacent and they thought there is no need for ideological work they became merely election fighting machines and they sleepwalked from one election to the other in between elections they they've done nothing they do nothing there's no ideological work so i mean this is a very important uh, observation parties have become solely election fighting machines and that scanned out the politics out of their uh, their core functions and that is the reason for this current situation actually and that I, is absolutely you know, this is what I, i keep telling yeah. you know today communalism has an army yeah does secularism have an army there's no army there's no army there's nobody no political party no civil society organization continuously working you know at a, at a massive scale like yeah. you know they have the communal organizations they do but here in the secular space who is there to you know capable and willing to put in hard work arduous work long hours of work without expecting any return without expecting any recognition without expecting any positions without winning elections you know somehow or the other they keep on going and going on and going on and on and on and on tell me one counterpart to that in this secular space political parties political parties as i said you know they have become uh, uh, election fighting machines they, they are not wedded to any particular core ideology not only that in our system it's so unfortunate that political parties who are supposed to be the vehicles of democracy are themselves very undemocratic yes the in their internal structure is it that yeah and with again a few exceptions most of the political parties in india you start from kashmir you know go all around and see all most of these political parties in, in dotting every state they are either a family organization mm-hmm. or organizations that are pocket organizations of some adventurous and resourceful individuals yeah. which are yet to become a family organization yeah yeah they are in the process of becoming a family, family organization they may may or may not but yeah. they remain a captive pocket organizations of some individuals, some individuals. so where where is where is the actual political dialogue where is the actual political and democratic process in the political parties which are supposed to be the vehicles of a polit- of democracy in a parliamentary democratic system that we have uh, elected to pursue not only that we have a system in place where the will of the people has to be in election executed by these people even if even if you vote for a political party expecting them to reject the communal agenda 
but this political party might join the camp yes tomorrow tomorrow where is the guarantee that if you vote for somebody they will really reflect your opinion the, and the will. the will of the people yes and uh, and here i just wanted to be specific don't you think that the real blame for this lies with the international congress you see one is that it has become it is the primary force of family dominated politics politics yeah that is what and slowly and slowly they have vacated the secret space they have slowly and slowly they have become ideologically devoid of a very strong belief system the leaders might have probably individuals have might have probably but as a structure but at this moment of time i don't think this is a time to you know sh- you know uh, indulge in blame game and yeah, who is responsible yeah. that is, that is that's, absolutely that's, no doubt that is it. that is that's not very important but today i'll tell you what if in 2024 the present government returns there is a very strong possibility there is a very strong possibility that we may not see if elections or we may not see if free and fair election because you see today the election commission selection is going to be done without the chief justice yes you know even even the judiciary is to a large extent i mean their integrity is now questionable questionable has become questionable yeah people are questioning about the the the, the kind of uh, rulings and wording statement statements and other things yeah. that is one another thing is that you know um, you you've been having this kind of a thing the dog whistles and uh, you know lynchings and calls for economic boycott you know then uh, oh, reopening all the temple issues and whipping up some kind of a frenzy and people you know the so called sadhus supposed to be very spiritually uh, inclined they were supposed to be devoid of any worldly desires that's it they assemble and they call for genocide yeah they call for keeping arms and exhorting one particular community to keep arms and you know um, attack the other community and in some places i'm sure you just come to your notice that houses are being marked, marked. now nobody responsible either from the ruling party or from the government says anything about these things they don't condemn it yeah. they don't uh, register their uh, objection to this what i'm trying to say is if this trend continues you don't hear this from dharma sansars or you know small small people and not any more dog whistles but these kind of a calls for economic boycott genocide marking of uh, uh, you know houses all these things can even come from the ramparts of red fort that is the kind of danger that we are staring at and coming back how to fight in this thing is it's a major theme everybody is discussing opposition and as you said most of the efforts often end up in election fighting exercise it is not percolating down as a kind of a day to day activities because your enemy is doing a day to day activity every time every hour they are doing their this thing but uh, the 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 others were supposed to fight or supposed to wait some kind of a counter narrative they are not do, they are doing it on a token or on a handout basis because if you look at uh, if several parts of the country you have cases mounted upon individual civil society organizations but there is there was nothing called a concerted effort to bring all these things together and bring kind of a challenge whether it is in the judicial judiciary or even this thing. so in that the situation things looks bleak isn't isn't to see the thing is this that in order to take on this first of all we need to understand the nature of the situation yeah the threat and we should also understand why we landed here yes what was the process, process. 
if you have clarity on that then of course you will know what were the mistakes that were committed in the last 60 70 years then we have to rework that that is number one number two don't get me wrong but i am not the person who is going to trust political parties because it is the political parties which have you know landed us here progressively most of the political parties have distanced or you know they have become indifferent to the core values of our constitution of our republic and you see those values were not just you know they, they were not just like that thought up no no it was they were a result they were a culmination of the long and protracted freedom movement oh they have emerged from there yeah. and they were given a shape in the constituent assembly but somehow political parties have you know become very indifferent to that you know they 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 thought that political process is only fighting an election nothing else society doesn't does matter culture doesn't matter economy doesn't matter nothing matters you know just they somehow got into this feeling that political electoral outcomes are independent of these things but you have to see that these things are corrected now for that it is the civil society organizations which have to work and if you give it to the responsibility is given to people who are in electoral politics they will you know look at only what what can i how many votes can i get if i say this how many votes would i lose if i say that or how many votes would i say would i would i get if i don't say a particular thing or a particular way no all that but people who are not in the electoral game they are the ones who have to work intelligently very put in hard work put in protracted work they should be you know it's it's not a it's not a monday to friday 10 to 5 job yeah yeah it's it's a continuous thing and even if even if by chance this government is defeated in 2024 the threat will not go away yeah because it you know it, it communal thing is like a virus it has the capacity to wait you know the i i am very frequently reminded of this albert camus uh, novel uh, plague plague at the end of it when everybody is celebrating the end of plague the doctor doesn't celebrate because the doctor knows that the virus lives dormant it's dormant it is there in the window sill it's there there the wash basin it's under the cot it is in there in the, in the bookshelf it is in the book but it can wait the, the the strength of the virus is the capacity to wait. wait it can wait for one year five years 10 years 50 years 20 years 100 years now a virus had waited for 100 years in the now case yes. and it is now showing its misurupa so therefore we the 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 solution to this is civil society solution to this is is continuous vigilance hard work to bring back the constitutional values into the into the into the public domain and you see we have come so far away i tell you people and platforms and organizations which had absolutely no role in the long freedom movement of this country today are able to market themselves as patriots they have inherited all the you legacy see, of they, the anti colonial struggle they 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 are co-opting people they are co-opting icons they are co-opting the leaders they are co-opting the names and you know, throwing sir some names out painting some people as not patriotic yes. painting some people as uh, you know and actually they were the ones who were not part of any of the freedom movement and any of the struggle yeah that is that is the ironic situation that we are in and uh, coming back to again to 2024 because uh, although election is not the only way to counter this thing but it is an important decisive event in the political year what do you think about the situation See, nothing is inevitable the current government's defeat is not inevitable 
the current government's victory is also not inevitable but despite all this trump beating yes 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 you see we have seen so many regimes you know they they look formidable invincible even until they fall until they fall yeah so there is a chance there is a possibility of the current government getting defeated or there is also a possibility that the current government comes back to power but that not both of them are not inevitable i believe in human agency i believe in how people look at this and how people you know resist this how people see the clarity with clarity how how people see the issues are they are they willing to be swayed by a ram mandir or are they willing to see what exactly is biting them their day to day lives you know communal harmony their economic well being price rise unemployment and you know day to day situation and you know uh, chinese occupying large chunk of uh, our land these are the issues that have to be highlighted you see you have to foreground these things the government and the ruling dispensation will always try to divert the people's attention to you know we have built a mandir we have built this we have uh, reclaimed something which was there uh, you know, 500 years ago and all that you know without going into the merits or demerits of that but you see okay that's fine but what is what is what is your employment situation what is the price situation what is your health situation what is your uh, country's territorial integrity these are the issues that ha- that need to be foregrounded so that is where somebody i mean i even uh, one of the reviews uh, reviewers of your book has uh, pointed out that you know you have not given enough uh, space or enough attention to what you want they call the new welfareism which is being brought by this government especially this uh, dispensing cash through this uh, electronic transfer and digital uh, this thing and all so do you think that that has c- c- created a kind of see, a uh, that's a very clever ploy mm-hmm. by the current regime i'll tell you what what it means actually what they are doing is that you know they are giving three cylinders to you yeah and asking you to be happy yeah but they give six airports to their friend so okay. three cylinders to you but three airports to a friend or six airports to a friend okay you know in the name of reforms they are selling the but at the same time they, they have cleverly removed the lpg subsidy they are not giving yes. that is also digitally yeah. done but, but then whenever whenever a state goes to polls they say you know we'll give you two or three uh, cylinders cylinders yeah so this is the, that is the reason why i say that you know we we need to turn the people's attention that you know they are trying to fool you by giving one or two small small things but they are actually selling the country this this narrative needs to go into the people the people's attention should be fixed on this not on you know uh, okay i i get two cylinders but then what is happening to the country that is also important so mm-hmm. welfareism see for instance when why is it why is it necessary for the government to give these kind of things that is because the purchasing power of the people has come down so drastically drastically otherwise you know if the claims of reduction in poverty are bogus if they are really authentic then why is where is the need for uh, giving a uh, a uh, free ration to free ration and you know subsidized uh, gas and other things there is no need which means that they are aware but in order to divert the attention from the actual problems they are saying that you know you be happy with this three cylinders so i mean coming to the concluding part of this discussion i would also like to highlight i mean to bring this uh, issue of india's foreign policy especially during the last 10 years uh, uh, everybody is uh, saying that india is now on top of it uh, but at the same time as you have mentioned we don't know whether china has occupied our territory or not and uh, so what what exactly is happening See, that i think you what um, even that you know the the government has 
has mastered this art of turning everything into a spectacle. The pres French president is here for the yeah. Republic Day. It's become a huge spectacle. But what is the actual reality? All your neighborhood is alienated today. Yeah. There's not a single friend around you. And another huge neighbor, China, is sitting on a large chunk of India's territory and the, and we are in denial. The Prime Minister says nobody has come, nothing has been occupied. But you know, everybody knows, including his own party people, somebody like Subhuman and Swami, day in and day out tells you that you know the Chinese are sitting on a large chunk of India's territory. And you know, it is the spectacles that are being played out. But actual diplomatic relations, actual situation in terms of uh, cordial relations with many countries are in doldrums now. And uh, this particular factor is not being discussed at all. In, uh, Because you see, the, the, the media is completely compliant. And uh, you know there are attacks on uh, independent policy uh, organizations. Like the yeah. Center for Policy Research is now completely under attack. That's so there, are, there is an attempt to muzzle these voices. When do you muzzle these voices? Any voice. When you have something to hide. When you are afraid of truth. See, that is one issue you have highlighted in your book also. You have said that the government has promised transparency, the government has promised inclusiveness, and the government has promised uh, uh, development and welfare and all these things. And it And in all these areas, the government was not, I mean, it's a kind of a complete failure. You see, it, it, the government has... What the, you have highlighted is that instead of that, uh, they the government started using the ED and other agencies to muscle the opposition or the yeah. critics. Yes. And uh, there is a kind of an increasing vehemence in, in unleashing such agencies against your critics. Absolutely. See, now the... the, the The misuse of laws, for instance, like UAPA. Now, anybody can be now, you know, a, 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 a small journalist can be now, you know, a student activist, can be now put in uh, uh, prison behind bars, and nobody knows when he or she is going to come out. Bhima Koregaon, you know, and uh, so many people uh, you have, have, they're using that. And then, You know, you, if you notice a pattern, people in different political parties are raided by IT, by ED, and all these agencies. Look at the f case of Sisodia. They're raided. Cases are registered. When they switch parties, they're clean. When they go to the ruling party, they're clean. Yeah. And they also become chief ministers of states. You have very clear examples of that. Yeah. That is one. The second thing is, I mean, there are now data completely available that 98-99% of the people who were raided by the agencies belong to opposition parties. parties yeah. And nothing is coming out of them. But the harassment continues. Okay, yes. Because you see, in India today, the, under this government, the situation is that, you know, by accusing somebody, And you have to prove that you are innocent. It's not that the state has the has the burden to prove that you're guilty. That is the kind of situation. Yeah. And the 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 accusation, the allegation itself becomes a, becomes a sentence. Sent sentence, yeah. That is the kind of situation we are living in today. So people are afraid. People are worried. Editors are being sacked at the instance of the government. Advertisements are stopped. Newspaper offices are raided. If they are striking any independent positions on the on whatever is the government doing, now this is all around. Now another thing is that you know the days of uh, censorship, where an officer sits in your office and sees to show, to ask you to show what you're writing, those days are gone. gone yeah. The, the muzzling, in, in, including the social media, where we thought that you know the 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 
watch dogs or watchmen or the gatekeepers like enters and all that are are you know you 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 want to air uh, an opinion and you record it and pull it up or uh, even that is being muzzled to muscle it's facing it's facing yes. a crisis so they've changed even the even the acts which which govern the digital media yes and they they can lock you up they can put you behind bars and nobody can rescue you that is the kind of atmosphere we are living in and democracy is being slowly and slowly again i draw your attention you know in the 60s and 70s there used to be a coup there used yeah. to tanks roll in and you know occupy the presidential palace and parliament and things like that and there was a military dictatorship yeah. and you know democracy is gone but today democracies are not killed in one fell swoop of a sword or a gun it is slowly and slowly you know you see can you can you imagine that in the so called mother of democracy 147 mps are suspended and then uh, uh, legislations are made that is the kind of democracy that we are living in there is no discussion you you pass three important acts re- regarding the uh, agriculture sector, sector which is the most important sector which directly and indirectly impacts the largest part of our economy and geography and the population they are passed in under 5 minutes and they were withdrawn god knows why they were passed god knows how they are and why they are withdrawn no rationale is given for passing them no rationale is given even for withdrawing them so that is the you point. take the example of this uh, three laws i mean amending the and i mean changing the indian penal code yes. to all these yes. things where is the discussion where is the discussion so very nice of meeting you sir and uh, thank you very much for uh, spending so much of your time with us thank you <laughs>